If you have a paddle switch or dimmer that's not behaving with your SmartThings Z-Wave network, you may have to do an activity called exclusion, whereby you unpair that switch and then you pair it back into the hub um, so that it can now communicate properly. This isn't a simple process and the instructions are very unclear and, and con contradicting in several places. Some of it has to do with the fact that there are old generation switches and some of the newer switches. So you want to be aware of what you're dealing with. So first off, uh, selecting Honeywell, which this switch here on the right is, versus GE does have different um, requirements in your SmartThings app. So you need to know, am I dealing with a Honeywell switch, a GE, a straight up Jasco, or one of the many other rebranded Jasco products. So understand what brand you're working with first. Secondly, look at what age is that switch. You can tell by these date codes that are on stickers that are, that are indicated. This one here says 1522. That means it's a 2015 year, 22nd week of the year. This is a newer one. This has got a sticker that says 2022. So that's the year 2020 and the 22nd week. So a more modern switch here. What you can also do is look at the switch itself. The size is different. The one on the left is the older switch. It's larger. The one on the right is 20% smaller. It's one of their selling points that you can fit this into the multi-gang switch, switch box is a little easier because there's more room for the wiring in the back. So they're definitely a little bit smaller. They also don't come with those breakaway tabs that used to be on the sides of these here. They just don't have them anymore. They're just a slimmer um, cut. So that's your first thing. Figure out what am I dealing with, old versus new. So now let's assume that both of these switches do not cooperate with my hub. You know, I push the button, push the app. It does not affect the light switch. So I need to reset them. So how do I do that? Well, first thing I want to do, I'm going to remove them from my network. And you can do that a few ways, but I'm going to do it this way here. I'm going to go into the switch. In this case, I'm talking about the left dimmer switch. And I'm going to choose the options. I'm going to choose edit. And I'm going to see at the very bottom here, it says delete device. And I'm going to try to delete it. It says, hey, if you're going to delete this, that's fine, but you're going to need to add it again. Okay, fine. I'm going to delete it. Now it's trying to do an exclusion routine. See at the top it says Z-Wave exclusion. For this, i got to wake it up and tell the, the hub which one I'm talking about. Well, I'm talking about this left one. So I push the button, and then boom, very quickly, the hub found it and said, hey, I deleted it. It's been excluded. And now it's gone from my test zone. The only thing left is the other switch. Well, I'm going to get rid of that one too. So I choose it, I hit my options, I hit edit, and I'm going to delete device. It says, do you want to delete that? Yes, I do. Same thing. It's starting in the exclusion mode, and now it's asking you, push a button here so I know which one you're talking about. Well, I want that one turned off, and now it's been deleted. Now I have nothing in my test room here. This worked out well. It doesn't always work that way. Sometimes it can take two minutes for it to just find your switch after you push that button, that pa uh, paddle button up top uh, before it acknowledges it. And it just sits there and spins and spins and spins. So you got to wait. You got to be patient. After a while, this will time out. And if it never did find these devices, it'll ask you, do you really want to remove it? I'll forcibly remove it. And then you can hit OK, and then it'll delete it from this screen as well. But if that happens, you're going to need to do a reset on these switches so that they are factory reset and can be added again somewhere in the future. The way that works on the old versus the new switches and, and dimmers is different. What you'll hear is that in the older su switches, you would be able to pull the power out of the switch, which is this air gap switch at the bottom, they call it. You just take a little screwdriver and just pull this tab forward. And it'll pop out just slightly. That completely kills the switch, takes all the power out of the switch. Then they would say on the older switches, push it in and then push the top button 10 times fast. And then you should see some blinking here by your LED light. Well, what I've come to find is that never hardly works. And on the older switches, I have a hard time getting them to be manually reset. 
Typically it'll work through the SmartThings app, but not always. And sometimes you could have a switch that just can never be talked to again. But that's what I've come to understand is the only way to really reset the old switches is pull the air gap switch out, kill the power to it, and very quickly, 10 times, press the top paddle. Doesn't always work. On these newer switches, it's similar. You don't really gotta pull the air gap switch out, but what you gotta do is you gotta click the upper paddle and then the lower paddle three times fast. And I'm talking very fast. If you just do this casually and go one, two, three, one, two, three, you're not going to get any activity. No reset has happened because I haven't seen this light do anything. But if I do it very, very fast, you'll see it reset. And what it'll do is this blue light will start blinking. It'll blink four times, flashing um, somewhat quick. It'll have a long fifth blink, then a pause, and then the light will just stay on. And then you know that you've reset the switch back to factory. And then now that it's reset, you can go back to smart things and add it in again. So I'm going to do this manual factory reset on this Honeywell switch right now. Really fast. All right. So I don't know if you could see that blinking. I'll go a little closer with the camera. To give you a view of that. But again, if you click this slowly, click, 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 click. That LED light's not changing, but if I do it really, really like ridiculous fast, you'll get the four blinks, a long fifth, a pause, and then it'll stay on solid. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, pause, and then solid on. That's how that works. So now, assuming that I could manually reset this legacy old dimmer switch with the 10 clicks on the top and then what we did get confirmation that the new switch worked with the three on the top three in the bottom we can go back into smart things and we can start to add these devices uh, back into my network and then hopefully you get good behavior between your app and your switch so in my test environment i'm going to choose from the bottom add device it's going to say add a new device and it's gonna ask you what kind of device. So I'm gonna slide down to the switch, switch and dimmer. And that's gonna ask you what brand. So I'm gonna do the GE one first, which is the dimmer on the left. And it's a GE Z-Wave, so I'm gonna choose that. And now it's gonna say I'm getting ready. And then it's gonna say start and ask you to do an indicator. So that in this case, you just push the paddle on the top and then you wait. Like I said, Sometimes you can wait a very long time. It could take, I've seen two minutes, and then suddenly out of the blue, it just pops up. This one was pretty quick. This is good. Uh, it found it, and it's even recognizing that this is an older switch, and it doesn't have the newest Z-Wave security, which really comes back to these QRD codes at the bottom, and these pin numbers that I'll talk about here in a sec. Um, so... It's saying, hey, I found the switch, but just letting you know, it's an old switch. You might want to think about getting a better, newer switch with higher security. It even identified it correctly that it's a GE dimmer switch, which is pretty good. And you can go in here and you could change that name if you'd like. Just push on it. Doesn't? It's not really clear that that's editable, but it is. And you could go in there and say, I just want to call it GE dimmer. And now if you look at my test environment, here it is. Got my dimmer switch. Uh, the LEDs are, are showing lit, meaning these switches are in the off position. By default, they start in the off position with the LED light on. So if you're in a dark hallway, you could find the switch with that little light. Okay, what it looks to me is like this dimmer switch. I've now turned it off. The LED light went off. And the behavior on the app is showing that it's off. So what it's telling me is that there's a setting for this switch to control the LED and right now it's it's reversed from standard when they first come typically the uh, the light is on when, it, when the switch is in the off position so I'm gonna go ahead and change that to make it that way I go back to that switch itself I'll go in my test environment open up the switch check the properties choose settings in this case it says turn the indicator on when the switch is off well, 
It's not working that way right now. It's working the opposite way. But what I'm going to do is just move this around, and I'm going to re-indicate that when it is off, yes, I want that light to come on. LED indicator went off. I get the light. It just came on by itself there. So there's some disconnect sometimes between the switch and between your smart thing settings, and you have to go through and do, do what I just did there to get it in sync. So now my switch is off. My app says the switch is off. I'm going to head and push it. This is a dimmer, so it's a little bit slower to respond sometimes than a relay switch. But now the light went out showing that that switch is indicating on, and the app caught up to it and says, yep, your DE swimmer dimmer switch is on. Okay, I'll go ahead and turn that back off. Light comes back on, and I get my dimmer update, says it's off. So we're good. Now my dimmer switch, it's working. Let's go ahead and add the relay switch, the Honeywell. Same thing, go to my environment, choose the plus sign, choose what it is. In this case, it's a switch. In this case, it's not a GE, it's a Honeywell. I'm going to pick Honeywell. Yes, it's a Honeywell. Same thing, it starts to get ready. It's going to hit the start button here, and then it's going to ask me to do my key press. Start button, push your toggle. I just turned the switch on, which now turned off the light. And in this case, because it's a newer switch and it figured that out, it says, hey, I need the QR code for the device. The QR code is right down here at the bottom, and you can move the camera here to look at that, and it'll automatically pull that pin number into the system. Or you can choose to enter this pin code down here, and then you can type it in yourself. You can just put those four numbers, five numbers in there, and it'll go. Um, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and use the QR code for this. And it found it, and now it's going to verify the code. And again, this is another step that is not fast. It sometimes can sit here verifying the code for a couple minutes. So you just got to be patient and work through it. And here we go. This one wasn't that bad. So found the switch. It identified that it is a switch. And again, you can rename that if you want. Otherwise, you can just hit done and keep it. And now if I look in my test environment, I got both of my switches there. This one looks like the LED is working as expected. The LED is off because the switch is in the on position. I'll come up here and push the switch uh, to off, push the button. I turned it off, the app says it's off, and then I got the light. So that means that that's working. There's one other small capability on the newer switches that you can do right on the switch, and that's change the behavior of the LED lights. Much like the reset where we did three button pr presses at the top and three button presses at the bottom really fast, if you do three on the top and then one on the bottom, you'll reverse the functionality of the blue LED light. So in this case, my switch is off and I've got the blue LED light. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna go one, two, three, one. And lo and behold, that light is off. I'm gonna turn the switch off again. It's still off. So now I've reversed it. In my off position now, I get no light. But now in my on position, I get the light. So that's one way without the SmartThings Hub that you can reverse the light, LED light. So as you do three presses, you're gonna get a change in that behavior. This is the one where it's off all the time. Yep. On all the time. And now we should toggle with the off. Turn it off and get the light. And that's where we started. So that's how that works. Just one other cryptic piece of functionality that isn't well explained in any of the documentation from any of these switch companies, Jasco, or SmartThings. A process that you might want to investigate when you're adding several new switches into your home network 
is to do them like I've got set up on this table. Uh, basically, build yourself a wiring, uh, a direct wiring capability so that you can test these things and move them closer to your hub because adding devices to the hub does seem to need proximity to the hub itself. So what I've done here is I've taken an old extension cord and I'm using that to connect to my switches so that I can run power through them and add them to my SmartThings hub. This allows me to keep these switches a little closer to where the hub is so that they get discovered easier and things work a little smoothly. When you look at an extension cord plug, you've got one blade that's thin and one blade that's fatter here and thicker. The fatter one is the neutral. The thinner one is the line. This is the, the hot. Also coming off your cord, typically the smooth line, the, the, the side of the cord without the ridges on it is the neutral and the one with ridges on it is the line, is the hot. So all I've done is taken the line and I've indicated it with some red here so I don't forget. And I put that into the line part of my switch and I put the neutral into the neutral part of the switch. And then I added a couple more cables here so I could just connect two switches. You could connect all the switches in your project together just like this all the way through and then do all of your setup in one place. And that'd be a lot quicker um, just like I have here with your phone, um, with your app loaded and with your switches all ready to go and find out right up front, do I have any bad ones in the batch or, or not? It's a lot easier dealing with them here than dealing with them in your wall. So I find this to be uh, quite helpful. The other aspect of that is if your switch is not in proximity to your hub, it doesn't add well, meaning sometimes a hub can't find it. And so when you're putting switches in your house, if you're not gonna use this method and you're just gonna put them in the wall, at least start with those switches that are closest to the hub. And then you may find at some point that you can't reach the hub anymore. And you may have to move the hub closer to where those switches are. Um, I'm told that the repeating capability of these switches from switch to switch doesn't help you when you're trying to add new devices, that the new device add has to be a connection between the SmartThings hub and the device itself. One feature on all of these paddle switches is this thing at the bottom called an air gap switch. This is something you're typically never going to need to use. But if you wanted to disable power to the entire switch as if you unhooked it at the circuit panel or unplugged it from the wall, you just take a small screwdriver and pop this little thing forward. And then what you can see is that the light goes out and this whole switch is it's dead. Push it back in and power gets restored to the switch. That's really all that does. On some older models, you might hear some activities that you can do by unplugging that and then holding one of the paddle buttons down, pushing it in and getting some kind of functionality. I've yet to figure out what that is or how that's supposed to work repeatedly. To me, all this does is kill power to the switch. So hey, I hope this tutorial about how to reset these switches, how to exclude them and include them into your SmartThings app and debug problems with them was helpful. If you could, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It'll help other people find it as well. I know I was really frustrated in trying to find clear instructions on how to manage these switches. Uh, I hope this helps and hope you have a great day.